Hi again, everyone. Over the next couple days, we're going to be hearing stories about going on journeys. You might wonder why I have a jacket on inside the house. And that's because we're going to take a trip, and we've got to get dressed up and ready. I've got a full suit of clothes. I have my good luck charm, which is this little pigeon necklace. Do you have a good luck charm? Something that makes you feel comfortable and happy. If you can find that right now, that's a great thing to take with you on a trip when you're going somewhere that you've never been before or going to visit people that you really love. So, find your good luck charm. Find your jacket. There's a couple other things we need. Sometimes the sun's really bright, and it's good to have a pair of sunglasses. And sometimes it rains. And if you're lucky, you might have an umbrella. But if you don't have an umbrella, you might want to bring a nice hat. Now, I've got this hat. This hat is a little bit dramatic. Don't you think? I really like it. But I'm not sure it's the hat for this trip. Another hat that I have, it's this one. I'm really fond of this hat. You put this on your head, you get a nice visor, keep the sun out of your eyes. I think this is the hat for me today. What do you think? How does that look? That's a lot of protection from the sun. Maybe too much. Maybe that's overdoing it. Maybe not that. Another hat that I have, oh, and this other hat that I have, I'm not sure about it. What do you think? It's like this. Is this a good hat? I think we'll wear this hat. Yeah, let's wear this hat. There's a couple other things we need. It's good to have a bag when you go on a journey. I have a nice big bag like this that can fit all of our books. Um, but I also have a bag like this. We could take either one, or we could take both. Uh, and the last thing we need is a pair of shoes. It's always really important to have a pair of shoes, or perhaps a boot like this. La Bolta. That's a boot. You could bring your boots if you have a favorite pair of boots. I'm going to take these shoes with little buckles on. So we've got all our train gear. We're all ready to go. I'm going to take off my sunglasses so I can see the book. And I'm going to take off my hat because it's not yet time to go on the journey. There's one other thing that we need to take with us. If you go on a long trip, and especially if you're going somewhere you've never been before, it's really good to have some company. So, you remember how my necklace has a pigeon on it? I'll show you why. Pigeon! Come here, sweetie. Come here, pigeon. Pigeon is the name of my very good friend right here. This is Pigeon. This is Pigeon. Pigeon is a small black dog, and he is eight years old. Are any of you eight years old? Well, when you get to be Pigeon's age, sometimes you don't really want to go on a long journey, and he might not look like he's particularly excited about the trip that we're about to take. But luckily for him, he doesn't even have to leave his house to go on this trip. On this trip, we're going to take a ride on two little trains. Do you see this train up here? That's a train that a friend of mine sent a picture of. That train is in a state called Utah. And Utah is way out west, which means that you would drive out of the state of Rhode Island, where we live, and you drive through a lot of states like Connecticut, New York, Ohio, Iowa, and eventually, we would get to a state called Utah. Utah's in the west. And these two little trains, they're going west. Let's all get aboard. Now, there's one thing that we need to get ready to do before we get on the train. And it's not just putting our hat back on, although that would be good. And I suppose we could put back on our sunglasses, but you put yours on, and I'm going to keep mine in my pocket so that I can see the book. How does that sound? And if yours stop you from seeing the book, you can take them off to look at the pictures. The sun's not too bright today. The other things that we need to learn to do, we need to learn to make the sounds of a train so that we can help the train get on its way. One of those sounds is a whistle. Do you know how to whistle? If you can, that's great. If not, you have plenty of time. But you could try. Take your lips, put them like that, and pull air in through the little hole. Go. Pigeon's interested in that. Or you can put your lips together like that, and you can blow air out through the little hole. You can go. Yeah, he's really interested in that. And uh, so that's one sound. You can make a whistle. That's great. But another sound that a train whistle makes is a 
Do, do. And sometimes it's nice to go. Do, do. So if you can make that sound, a little too, that's great. And there's one other sound, and it's two sounds. One part of it is the sound of the wheels getting going. And they go, chuck, 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 chuck
or a whistle from the trains going west. What do you think made the dust storm for the little old train? Then the mountains came beyond the plain, and the trains started climbing west. Up and around and over and through the great high mountains to the west. The ocean was big. The ocean was blue beyond the land in the west. And the little train stopped. Their trip was through. They had come to the edge of the West. And that's the story of Two Little Trains by Margaret Wise Brown.